everyone, Ms. Patel Dane here for topic 7.7, .7, calculating equilibrium concentrations. So by the end of this video, you should be able to identify or determine the concentration or partial pressures of substances at equilibrium when given the initial conditions. So this is a first example. We have N2O4 is in equilibrium with NO2. We are also given the K value as well. Now note, this K value is pretty small. Um, so a lot of times we can say that this is going to favor the, um, or like the reactants are essentially going to be negligible. So in an, e an experiment, 1.0 moles of N2O4 is placed in a 10 liter vessel, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of NO2 and N2O4. So you'll see that we have this little table right here. We call that the rice table. The R stands for the reaction. The I is the initial concentrations or initial partial pressures. C is the change and E is the equilibrium. So of course for R, you just write in the reaction. I would be whatever they're giving to you initially. Now, a lot of times they give you just the initial conditions of the reactants and not the products. So you just put in zero for the products. For the C, that's gonna be your change. So that's in terms of X um, and it is based upon stoichiometry. So say for example, you had two moles of your reactants. Well, you know that um, it's gonna be however many moles of, of um, your substance are gonna be removed from your reactants to form your products. It's gonna be by a factor of two. So we say it's like a minus two. Um, say there were two or three let's say there were three moles of your product that would be plus three x over for your change so for your reactants we subtract out for your um, products we add in and then your equilibrium is just the sum be uh, between your initial and your change and it's going to be probably have an x value in there and that's what we use the k value to solve for so let's use this as our example again we have n2o4 is in equilibrium with no2 First, we balance the chemical equation. So we have NO2 for your um, gas, uh, for your products, excuse me. So we will go ahead and write out what that reaction is. So N2O4, again, in equilibrium with 2NO2. Since this is giving you essentially the um, start of concentration, we figure out what the molarity should be. So uh, recall that molarity is moles per liter. So we have 1.0 moles of N2O4 and 10 liters of uh, the vessel itself. So we should have uh, 0.10 molar for your concentration of your N2O4. And we don't have anything for our NO2. So it's one mole of N2O4, that's minus X. Since we have two moles of NO2, that's plus two X. So then we kind of use the bottom, the E, to help us solve for that. So it's uh, 0.10 minus X for the N2O4 and two X for um, NO2. Then we write the equilibrium expression. Your AP exam is going to look for this as well. Your AP readers are going to look for this to make sure that you know that. So then we're going to go ahead and solve, um, or sorry, plug in your K value, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 7 is set equal to 2x squared over 0 0.10 minus x. Now, since that um, exponent of your K is pretty small, we can say that for the reactants, um, that x is going to be small. So we'll write down x, or assume x is negligible. Um, again, make sure you write that down in there. So then you can get rid of x. It prevents us from having to do the quadratic equation um, later on. So on the AP exam, if you find you're doing the quadratic equation, you're probably going too far than you need to, or you may not have assumed x was negligible like you should have. So then we'll go ahead and solve for x. So we'll multiply both sides by 0 0.10. And we can plug that into our calculator. Um, and of course, for a multiple choice, you wouldn't have a calculator. So no, make sure you know how to do these on your own. So we end up getting um, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 8 is equal to 4x squared. And don't worry if you can't see the bottom of this. I'll have a screenshot for you in a little bit. So then again, using algebra, dissolve, uh, dissolve, sorry, um, divide both sides by 4. And then that gives you uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 8. And then you'll take the square root of both sides. So x would end up equaling uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4th. So that's your x. And that's what we're going to plug into um, for the E, the equilibrium concentrations for both substances. So we'll start out with N2O4. We know it's 0 0.10 minus x is going to um, equal your equilibrium concentration. So when we um, plug in 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth for x, we end up seeing that that's a really small value. So it, it ends up being 0 0.10 molar. So that assumption that x is small is 
valid. Um, again, it's helpful when you do not have to do the quadratic. So you'll do the same thing for NO2, and you'll do 2 times 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. So for that, we should end up getting, again, 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. And that's the concentration for NO2. So if we look right here, again, this is that work um, in case you weren't able to see the bottom half of it. Do make sure that you have um, what both of those substances are and put a box around your final answer. The next one, we have your K is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the second for uh, the reaction H2 plus I2 is in equilibrium with HI. And we're, we have the uh, rice table given to you. So in the experiment, 1.00 moles of H2 I2 and HI are introduced into the one liter container. So calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Um, I'm gonna have you pause in a second, but don't forget with this, write in the reaction, or sorry, balance the chemical equation first. Write your reaction, write in what your initial molarities are. Don't forget to convert to molarity. Figure out your change, your plus X, minus X, uh, whether it be one X or two X, um, and then what that is for equilibrium. Then set that equal to what your K value is and solve. So go ahead and pause and do this problem on your own. All right, so here we have um, your substances. We're gonna balance the chemical equation first, so we have two HI, and then we'll go ahead and put that into our rice table. So H2 and I2 is in equilibrium with two HI. And so we have 1.00 moles of H2, I2, and HI in a one liter vessel. And so when we solve molarity, we know that we have 1.00 molar. So we'll put that in the initial conditions for all three of them. Again, they won't necessarily give that to you for the, they may not give you what the um, product might be. So that might be something that you have to solve later on. We'll do our change for H2 and I2. Each are negative, or sorry, um, minus X. And then HI is plus 2X. Again, that 2 is coming from that coefficient. So we'll do our equilibrium expression. K is set equal to HI squared over H2 times I2. And then we will plug in our values. So we have uh, K is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the second. Now remember, this is the K lar or large K value. And so it's going to be, um, we can't say necessarily that X is negligible. Um, and so we have 1.00 plus 2x for your uh, product, your numerator. Um, don't forget to square that. And we'll do the same thing for the um, denominator. So since both H2 and I2 are the same thing, I'm just gonna square that here. Then that le leads us to be able to take the square root value of each one of them. So the square root value of one times 10 to the second is 10. And that's set equal to 1.00 plus 2x over 1.00 minus x. So we'll solve for x. We'll multiply both sides by 1.00 minus x. And then when we do that, <clears throat> we get 10.0 minus 10x is equal to 1.00 plus 2x. And then again, this is off the screen, but hopefully uh, you'll see it in just a bit. Um, get your x's on one side and get your uh, values without variables on the other side. So you'll end up seeing that 9.00 is equal to 12x, and then x is equal to 0 0.75 molar. So we'll move that material over on the right-hand side. So again, our x is equal to 0 0.75 molar. Now that's just our x. We have to plug that back into our values from before in order to make sure that we solve for them. So our H2 concentration is equal to our I2 concentration. And so that's 1.00 minus X. Again, make sure you show all this work for your AP readers. It does seem tedious, but they're looking for this. Um, so when you plug in for X, you end up having 0 0.25 molar for the concentration of H2 and I2. Do the same thing for HI. So 1.00 plus 2X, plug in X, and then you end up getting 2.50 molar uh, for your concentration of HI. And again, try to do these things in your head, especially when it comes to uh, multiple choice. So here is that sheet in case you need it, um, and in case you need the stuff on the left-hand side that you couldn't quite see. So let's try this one. Carbon dioxide reacts with steam to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen. 
at 700 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant is 5.10. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all the species if 1.000 moles of each component is mixed in a 1.000 liter flask. So again, pause and solve for your, um, on your own. All right, so hopefully you went ahead and solved. Um, so we have to first do our balanced chemical equation. Carbon monoxide gas reacts with steam, so that's um, gaseous water in equilibrium to produce carbon dioxide, CO2 gas, and hydrogen. Don't forget, hydrogen is uh, diatomic, so make sure you write H2. We'll also need to make sure that we um, balance it, and it is balanced at this point. Then we'll write in our equilibrium constant, so K is equal to 5.10. Um, and again, all that stuff's there to help you remember to look for that stuff later on. So it's a one one stop shop. Um, so plug in or write in your rice table and plug in your items. So your reactants, the carbon monoxide gas and H2O gas for your reactants and then your CO2 gas and H2 gas. Don't forget that solids and liquids are not included in equilibrium expressions. We'll still write them in the rice tables, but we'll just have them as like a little dash because their concentrations don't change um, significantly. So we want to make sure that we can plug in for our eyes. We have, uh, let's see, 1.000 moles in a 1.000 liter flask. And so, of course, that should be 1.000 molar for each of these substances. And if you have your concentration units listed on the left, you don't necessarily need to put them in the rice table as well. So you would have minus X for the reactants, plus, plus X for your products. So um, for each carbon monoxide and H2O gas, it's 1.000 minus X. And carbon dioxide and H2 gas is 1.000 plus X. So you've got your K expression. Carbon monoxide or CO2 times H2 over CO and uh, times H2O. Now don't forget, these are all in concentration, so that's why I can use the brackets. If these were in pressures, you'd write down a large P and then subscript the CO2, H2, et cetera. Um, the brackets are reserved just for molarity. So plug in your K value, 5.10, and then you have your CO2, H2 over your CO and your H2O. You can, um, since both of them are squared on the left, or sorry, on the right hand side, you can take the square root of both sides in order to solve or to help you get rid of that, um, that squared value. So um, the square root of 5.10 is 2.258. I'm keeping a, a bunch of units here, or sorry, a bunch of numbers here. So later on, my overall value can be more accurate. Um, but keep in mind that since that 5.10 is there, that we'll only have two sig figs. So then we will get um, X's on, or uh, sorry, get rid of the denominator. So 1.000 minus X times at 2.258. So we have 2.258 minus 2.258 X is set equal to 1.000 plus X. Get your X's on the same side and get your um, numbers without a variable on the other side. So when we do that, we have 1.258 is equal to 3.258 X. So then we solve for X by plugging that into our calculator. Not something easy that we can do in our head. So again, with algebra, um, we have 1.258 divided by 3.258. And that gives us 0 0.386 for X. And we'll go back in, plug in for what it is for equilibrium for each of the substances. So carbon monoxide is equal to H2O. And so we have 1.000 minus X or minus a 0 0.386. And we'll plug that into our calculators. So we have 0 0.614 molar for the concentrations of carbon monoxide and H2O. We'll do the same thing for the products. 1.00 um, plus X. So 1.000 plus 0 0.386. And then we should get 1.386 molar. 
Um, and the next one, the next slide shows you that uh, we've put those substances together so it's easier for your grader to see. It makes you put a box around it and don't forget appropriate units as well. So at this point, can you determine what the concentrations or partial pressures of different substances are at equilibrium based upon their initial conditions using the rice table? Thank you very much and have a great day.